Okay, so we have to multiply the energy in a particular mode by the probability that that mode will exist, okay, as we derived up here. And then, of course, we have to sum over all modes, okay, and that will give us um, the average energy in each mode. Okay, now we notice that we have an h nu and a 1 minus e to the minus h nu over kt and these things are not do not depend on n so if we factor them out okay and then we rewrite as we did before uh, e to the minus h nu over kt as q then this expression for the average energy in, uh, for a mode is given by um, for, aver for average energy in each mode is given by uh, this prefactor times the sum of n q to the n. Okay. Now, this looks a lot like this. Um, uh, this is kind of another. This looks somewhat like a geometric series. Again, remember this is a geometric series. Uh, we have the sum over q to the n, but now we have this other n. Okay. Uh, that there. So, uh, how can we um, relate this expression, which we wrote for this sum, to this sum? Okay, so we have to do a little trick here. Okay, and the trick is that if we if we differentiate this um, geometric sum, okay, then we get i times q to the i minus one, i times q to the i minus one. This is all inside the sum, um, and uh, if we use the quotient rule for differentiation for the express for the uh, you know the, the expression for the actual sum that we've written here on the right hand side of this uh, equality, then what you get is this is equal to minus p plus 1 q to the p times 1 minus q, okay? And this basically comes from differentiating the top um, and then plus uh, 1 minus q to the p plus 1, and that comes from differentiating the bottom, okay? and then over 1 minus q squared, which is just the, the bottom squared. Okay, so that's, the, that's basically the quotient rule for differentiation. Okay, and then what we want to do again is take the limit of this expression as p goes to infinity because we have an infinite sum in the actual um, expression there. Okay, so now if we take that expression that we got from the quotient rule and we look at the limit when p goes to infinity because again um, we have an infinite sum in the expression that we actually want to evaluate then we see that this just uh, sets the limit of the uh, this sets the limit of the um, sum to infinity um, this part doesn't change okay because it doesn't involve p and this part if you have again a, a quantity q which is less than zero as it is okay um, to the infinite power, then this term is going to go to zero, okay? And so is this term going to go to zero? And what we're left with is just one. And so the in the limit of p goes to infinity, this differentiation of the of the um, geometric sum with respect to q is going to be equal to one over uh, one minus q quantity squared. And then if we what we notice is that if we multiply this sum by one one uh, by q to the first power, then that basically will get rid of this minus one, okay? And so what this implies is that the sum from i equals zero to infinity um, of uh, q times uh, i to the q to the i minus one, and this will just be equal now to one minus q squared. Okay. And so now this q times q to the minus i minus 1 will just be i q to the minus i. Okay. Or, um, I'm sorry, what did I do here? Oh, this should not be negative. This should be, this should just be i minus 1. Okay. Let me rewrite this whole thing. To the i minus one. And so now uh, you'll just get i q to the i, which is kind of more comparable to what we're actually trying to evaluate there. 